Thanks, I appreciate it. So thanks everybody for coming out this morning. Uh, so it's actually a really good morning. Uh, last time I did an event with Trading Pub, I think it was a year ago, um, and it was a little bit slow in the market because I did an afternoon session. This time uh, everybody was able to get me in during the live market. So I actually have some positions on that actually directly apply to what I'm going to discuss today. So it's, it's actually a really good trading day. And so we'll get into that. Um, so we'll actually do some live trading because I have some positions, like I mentioned, I need to get out of. Um, and so we'll cover that as well as some ideas. So this should be a really good session. Um, before we get started, as always for legal, we have to get a disclaimer out of the way. Um, so none of this that we're going to discuss is our recommendations or any advice. So I'm not a registered financial advisor. Um, the second thing is uh, with this as well, any of the trades you see me take, right? You know, please don't take them. Um, you know, don't follow me on this, you know, because these are already trades that I've made. Um, so yeah, please don't take any of the trades. So with that out of the way, we'll get discussing and we'll start talking about this. Um, I'll go over really quickly a brief background of myself. I don't really like, it's very strange to talk about yourself. Um, you can find a bio of me online if you're interested in researching. Um, I've actually been trading for 10 years. I actually turned 30 tomorrow. Um, I started when I was 20 years old at Charles Schwab. So I've been in finance my entire career. Um, when I was 24, I worked for a hedge fund, a long short in equities, a venture driven hedge fund in Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, I then moved to a family office. I managed a portfolio uh, for a family office in Los Angeles. So I traded options and futures there. I came back to Arizona. Um, I worked on the institutional deal desk of a Forex uh, broker dealer and the option side as well, helping to get their options institutional side together. Uh, then last year I worked for hedge fund and I still kind of advise to them. Um, and I, here in Scottsdale, same thing, long, short equity options. Um, and then this year uh, we have the company, we, you know, we've been teaching people for probably about three or four years now, uh, really to trade options and futures, but we're gonna talk about options um, because a lot of the newer traders, or if you've never traded options, um, I think they're really, really good products, not only because I trade them myself, uh, but if you're trading a small account, they really allow you to be flexible with the account capital you have, and then the options you can actually um, allow yourself. So you don't have to day trade everything, right? So a lot of the day trading stuff that you see today in the marketplace um, is really tough to replicate, which is a huge reason why I would say a lot of retail traders have an issue being successful in the markets. So with that being said, um, if anybody has questions throughout this, we're gonna do live Q&A at the end, and then I'm gonna go to live trades like I mentioned. So you feel free to ask questions while we're doing this. So this is kind of a peek into our live trading room, uh, which I run Monday through Friday, because I'm actually gonna drop over to my, my live trading screen. So what we're gonna discuss with this is how much do I need to start? Uh, we're gonna talk about um, how we actually trade. Now I'm going to give you one of our methodologies that we trade the markets. Um, obviously there's more advanced stuff like selling credit spreads, but spreads, stuff like that that we teach, but they're not really designed for retail or really smaller trading accounts. So we're going to discuss how do I personally find stocks to trade? And then a really big question is how should I begin learning? So how many people have actually traded um, options before? whether it's equity options, futures options, or, I mean, whatever it is. Okay, so a few people. Nice. Yeah, so a few advanced traders in here, um, or if you've traded quite a bit, um, you know, if you have questions, hold off then, because some of the stuff I'm gonna to cover to begin is a little bit beginner, I would say, um, but it does kind of go in a different aspects okay so yeah a few good amount of traders in it so I'll discuss why I like options and I'll go through this and I think it's pretty clear why a lot of people like to trade options um, we focus on one portion so like a, our beginner stuff um, we kind of focus on directional options trading so simply buying calls and puts instead of shares on a company right so if you're a newer or retail trader trading with a small account, and I would consider a small account anything less than $100,000, um, it's very, very tough to basically sell premium in the markets, right? So Eric's talking about advanced stuff. Um, I think it's really hard to make any serious money selling premium, i.e. credit spreads, put spreads, 
uh, verticals. A lot of that stuff you kind of see that's kind of popular now. It's very, very tough to, um, I, I would say, make any, I would say what I would consider serious money in the markets uh, running those type of strategies, right? So I believe it's much easier, um, a little more simple for smaller trading accounts to directionally trade the markets. So we'll talk about some of those trades here. So one of the things options provide for those of you who don't know who've never traded them is leverage. Right, so when you're trading a small trading account, right, let's say, or it's an investment, whatever it is, right, the options market already provides you leverage. And again, this might be kind of elementary for some of you who traded before, but hang with me. So the second thing is the margin, right? You don't need a lot of margin to trade options, right? Specifically the way we're going to discuss trading them in this uh, lecture, um, you don't need margin, right? One of the huge things I've seen a lot is especially with stocks like Priceline, which I'm in the trade now, or Amazon, when you sell put spreads or credit spreads, um, it ties up a lot of margin, right? So if you're trading a $20,000 account, you really tie up a lot of that capital and you're not really free to you know, trade futures. If you're a futures traders as well, it basically ties up your, your cost of doing business. It's very tough to basically trade. So the second thing is there's little day trade, right? I'm not really a big believer in day trading. I think that whole entire concept of trading shares, um, trying to get in and out is pretty much over. I just saw a thing yesterday, um, uh, some bio stock where a lot of people are trying to short this bio stock. I saw someone lose $100,000 trying to day trade this thing. Um, it just hurts, right? It's very, very tough to do that. Um, there's just a misbit conception um, with what day trading is. So with options, at least we trade them, we don't really day trade them as much. So, We'll kind of go through this and we'll discuss, you know, where do I start, right? So some people have traded options. I'm going to assume because nobody else answered that uh, nobody else in here has traded options, or maybe you have or just didn't speak up, is where do you start? So I would say if you're new to options trading or if you're trying to venture into this world, if you're trying to add options to your portfolio, whether you trade futures now, whatever it is, right, you want to kind of give yourself, I would say, a starter trading account. And what I mean by that is something that's two to five thousand dollars, nothing too serious, right? But something that A gives you skin in the game and B allows you to trade live without blowing up, you know, twenty or fifty, hundred thousand dollars, right? So I would not start reading trading books. A lot of people come to us and they ask, you know, what trading books do you recommend, right? A lot of trading books are either A outdated, B are pretty much bio um, biographies of other traders and they're kind of um, you know, there's a story, so you don't really learn much from it. Um, so it's very, very tough to learn from trading books, right? It's much easier to basically either trade on simulation, which I'll discuss in this lecture, um, or basically trade live and do it with a small account. So you start understanding it, right? So the other question we get is, how long should I expect to actually learn to do this full time, right? Trading is not easy, right? Despite what you see online, despite what people discuss, and they want to make it seem easy, it's not easy, right? I've been at this 10 years. Um, I started on the, as an analyst side on this, I eventually moved to as a trading side, right? It's very, very difficult if you don't know what you're doing, right? I would say typically the amount of time to dedicate towards this is anywhere from six to 12 months, right? What happens a lot with I would say traders, whether they switch from Forex to options, or they switch from penny stocks to options, is they automatically assume they're going to start killing it the first two, three months. Right? So what happens is if you start making mistakes and blow your trading account, you're out of basically ammo to start trading with, right? You have nothing else to basically come in the market and use that capital to trade with after you've learned from the mistakes you shouldn't have made, right? So you want to give yourself time to trade. Right, because once you understand it, it pretty much becomes kind of like riding a bike. So the second thing is you want to set realistic goals. Right? I don't think it's realistic to say you're going to have a $5,000 trading account and in six months you're going to quit your job and you're going to do this full time. Right? I don't think that's realistic. I think what's realistic is somebody having a two or $5,000 trading account learning to start, they get the hang of it, they put more money in and they can realistically create an additional income from trading right, until they learn they want to do this full time. I think that's realistic, right? So the next thing is technical analysis, right? If anything at all, if you're new to this, or if you're trying to find your way, I would say the number one kind of emphasis or point I would study would be technical analysis, 
right? Price action, Fibonacci's, trend line, support resistance. That is the number one kind of skill set I would say that would help you to learn to trade, whether it's options, futures, whatever it is, um, it's technical analysis. So the next thing is kind of, it's kind of keep it simple, stupid. I don't know if many of you have heard of this before. We talk about it a lot in our trade room. It's really, really simple, right? The trend's up, we're buying calls. The trend's down, we're buying puts, right? It's really simple. We try not to overcomplicate it um, with too many trend lines, with you know, 20 different moving averages. Um, you know, the stocks are either going to go up or they're going to go down. It's literally as simple as that. Um, you know, I'd rather make money than actually try to attempt to sound smart in the markets. Um, you get a lot of that today with people who like to sound smart, um, but really can't produce much on the way of profits. So the last thing I'll discuss before we go over to my trade screen is education costs. So we get this question a lot, right? If you're new to this, if you're, if you're going to attempt to trade a new product or trade a new market, how much money should you allocate to that? Right. It's one thing to go out and buy one trading program or mentorship or something. It's entirely different to go buy five or six of them to waste all your money on that, not have any money left to trade the markets. Right. So I would say 10%, you're trading a $10,000 account, I would allocate somewhere around 10% to that towards research, um, a new service, a trade room, education. I would allocate 10% of your, your cost of your business um, to go out and start to learn or get additional information that help you. So that being said, I'm going to go over, I actually have this lined up for live examples, some trades that I've recently made. Uh, but since the market's moving, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually bring up my main screen now because I have positions on. And I'm going to discuss as we go through this, um, some of the positions I'm in and I'll discuss as like, because I need to get out of some of these positions. Um, so I'll actually get out of them and we'll discuss questions if you have them. So currently in my portfolio, everything I'm discussing, um, this is just today's trade. I came in long overnight. I have some Tesla calls, uh, State Street Corp, uh, Skechers, which this is actually a swing trade we're going to discuss later. Uh, Priceline, which I'm waiting to basically take off for me. Goldman Sachs, Expedia, which was just a monster of a trade this morning. Uh, Chevron and then CRM, which I traded the earnings with and covered this position in the morning. So as we kind of go through this, I, what I need to do is I'll, I'll walk through some of the positions I have on and I'll kind of walk you through the analysis of what I was looking for as we're getting into these. And I need to actually get out of some of them while we're in these. So first I'm going to start with Expedia. Right. So one of the things that I look for when I'm trading in the markets is the second one for this. Our stocks that move, right, especially with trading options. Right. So this type of option strategy, directional options trading, um, I guess it's definitely different from, you know, selling covered calls or, or covered puts. I'm really not a believer. And that methodology, I think a lot of that methodology is based on people who regurgitate information um, and they kind of teach you a way to create income, right? Number one, it, it's very risky to be selling. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's risky to sell covered calls or puts. Um, you're just not going to make a lot of money, right? So I'm here to make money in the markets. Um, you know, we're not saving, you know, the whales here. So with this, with EXPE, with this position, yesterday we were long calls in this, right? So I cleared most of this position now. Um, but this was kind of a trade we were looking for, where we were looking for a retracement. Right, so how many of you have actually traded the Fibonacci before? While we're doing this, I actually need to look at these options because I covered most of them. Simple one, 207. So you traded the Fibs, yeah. So with a lot of Fib trading, we're kind of looking at put this order out so literally this is this morning so uh i think it was again it was telling me i needed to get on 10 minutes and i was trying to clear this position that i had on in this particular account but we'll go through this now so with fibs and i think brad said he traded with him i don't know if anybody else has we we're looking for a move to basically retrace on this right when you look at this stock right it's pretty much in a clearly defined trend Right. And if you notice my charts, this is exactly what it looks like in our trade room. There's nothing, I mean, there's nothing else on different on this. So 
it's pure price-based trading. So when I discussed earlier technical analysis, that's one of the most important things I use because without the technical analysis, if I don't understand how a trend works or understand market waves, it's very tough to come in and put a position on like this, right? So this is pretty simple. I, I would say, in my opinion, from a trend basis, right? On the daily time frame, you have higher, higher lows, right? This breaks this high here. This pulls back, breaks this high. And again, you make a higher low, right? So trend basis, you're looking at this. You're thinking, okay, well, this is pulling back. This is just going to trend up, right? You're looking for the trend to continue, right? With Fibonacci, what I was looking for was now that you have this thesis, that's one point. But where do you think this is going to go, right? Because with options trading the way we trade them, right, you're going to deal with time decay, right? For those of you who don't know what time decay is, I'll discuss it as we go through this lecture, right? You need to have an understanding of where you want to take this particular trade. Just the thesis enough that you think uh, Expedia stock is going to go higher is not enough, in my opinion, to go out and throw your hard-earned money at a position and say, look, I think it's going higher. I'm just going to throw some calls at this, et cetera, et cetera. Right? So how do you actually place this trade? Well, we are looking at a Fibonacci retracement on this. Right? Pretty simple. So swing high to swing low. Let me actually get rid. I'm not sure why I'd save those. I don't actually use those at all. So that just got filled in that last call. So swing high to swing low on this, right? We are looking for a retrace, right? I don't really use a 38.2 fib. I'd rather set my sights target or set my sights uh, higher and try and go after something bigger, right? Yeah, I agree with that stuff. And we were actually trying to short that. That's funny. So we're looking at the 132 and 130 on this, right? On this particular trade setup that we took yesterday, right? We were long the 128 calls, right? This is almost exactly the same as trading the shares um, because of the deltas that we use with this on this particular trade, right? So not really rocket science, I would say, with this. These calls yesterday we got for 40 cents. Um, they've basically popped to 160 this morning. If this thing gets some legs here, they might go to 2, 220 on this. So that's kind of what we're looking for, right? So with that assessment, right, with the FIB assessment, the second part of the trade was we weren't really looking for this to get above 130 or 132, right? So when you're trading options, right, at least the way we look at the market directionally is where do we want to take the trade in? Right. Where do you want to exit? It's one thing, again, to have the thesis to get into the trade. It's a second thing to actually manage that risk and manage a position properly. Um, and this was, I would say, our, our analysis, right? We wanted to get basically 130. Were you long WTW? So any, any questions on that? Because I'm going to start clearing out some more of these positions. Um, I got rid of that. I got rid of that. What do I need else to get rid of? Yeah, this is Thinkorswim. Really good platform. So I've been using this uh, probably since 2008. I would say it's probably one of the best, in my opinion, trading platforms. It's free. You know, there's no really cost to it. So. So Tesla was the next position I'll discuss. There's no questions on this particular trade. And I was going to go past, I had a trade on price and it was like a $14,000 trade recently that I'll cover as well. Um, it was a past trade, but again, since I've got live positions on, it's pretty cool to kind of go through this and literally do live analysis and walk through this. So Tesla is another trade that I'm in right now, right? Same kind of concept, directional, just buying a call, looking for the stock to trade higher. Right. So again, none of this is based on thesis. I, I mean, you know, a lot of people will discuss, you know, well, I like Tesla because I see a lot of the cars on the road or, you know, whatever you know, it may be. It's really tough to make trading decisions on a short term time frame, right, without a technical basis. Right. So that's why I discussed earlier is technicals are really important because they kind of help you to, you know, find out where you want to, you know, take your trades to. So this was a situation, for those of you who don't really know where, or technical terms, it was almost a double bottom. 
right? This basically came down to these levels a few times on this, on the weekly. And once we kind of touch these lows, again, same concept, right? We had a pretty defined double bottom here, so we were looking for support to be held and for this to trade higher, right? But with this particular trade setup, right, the way this was looking to us is we wanted to give ourselves time. Right, so if you're a trader who doesn't want to sit at the screens all day, which, you know, it's, it's tough to do. I don't really think it's healthy. I try not to do it too much anymore. Um, you want to put yourself in a position where you can give yourself time to allow the trade to move. Right, because it's one thing to trade shares of this, where you can just sit and leave it alone. It's another thing to trade options directionally and try and beat the time decay with this. Right, so we were looking at a position where it came off lows and where we wanted to take it to highs. Right, so with this, we're looking at something where, again, taking a swing low to swing high, where we're looking at a potential of 237, possibly 245. And so I'll cover, let me go over this trade real quick. I'm probably not exiting this one, but I'll discuss this because this is actually a swing trade in this particular account. But I'll discuss. actually trading really well right now. This whole market's moving extremely well after Yellen's speech yesterday. So with this particular trade, um, we elected to use and give ourselves about 10 days time to get, right? We wanted to get this to get higher, right? Even though the weeklies on this move are up a lot more than this is here, I believe, you know, based on analysis, I want to swing this into this particular move, move right? Now there's a methodology or kind of a strategy you can use where you use weeklies and monthlies with this. Um, I don't have any positions on right now, so I won't discuss it, right? But this is starting to trend higher. Right? I want to kind of see this come in, A, take out these previous highs here to see if you basically retest these highs here. So pretty simple technical analysis. Um, again, like I said, I mentioned before, it's not that in depth or you know there's no really attempt to make it too sophisticated because it's just not that sophisticated are the commissions worth it if you have actor and active trader yeah so i can't mention what we pay but we have a group rate um because we trade a lot so we've secured a group rate that's actually really good i mean it's probably it's probably as close as you could get to I would say if like you're a small institutional trader where you can get your rates at low, it's really low. I would say it's, it's, it's really difficult to trade when you have like a $10 ticket fee where you're paying like $10 plus, um, you know, what's it, three or $4 or not, maybe less, a dollar an option contract, it gets really expensive. You know, one of these accounts, from, I'll, maybe I'll pull it up, I have like 17,000, and that's not to brag, I'm just saying, as an example, I have like 17,000 in commissions. This year, you know, it just gets expensive. Right? So, is a lot of this stuff foreign? I mean, anybody use these principles before? I think it's pretty simple. Um, again, this is really a look into the live trade. So the next position I'll discuss, and again, if you have questions, feel free to shout them out. And we'll go through this. Is Priceline, this is a stock that I hold near and dear, right? So I, I cleared it, I'll cover it here in this session. I cleared 14,000 um, recently on this particular name. I was up a little bit more on this today. And we'll discuss this. Where are we? 13, 12, 50. Yeah, so I'll walk you through this trade here in the 1325s. So I cleared some of this position yesterday, and I'll walk through the analysis on this. These ones expire, actually. I have some time. Okay, great. Nice. So Priceline, and I'll explain what I was looking for in this and walk through this in detail. So we were actually short this uh, into earnings um, last Monday. I was in New York, and I trading mobile and was able to short at the open in addition to the longer position. But now in this position, I made a video on it yesterday, we're looking to basically trade this particular move back up to these highs, right? So the same concept with this is, right, we held a support level, 
and you're looking for a gap fill, this to basically trade higher back into this fib level. Right, so we're taking a fib high to fib low. And I'm just looking for this to trade this. So if you can see right now, it's basically just teetering on this fib. It's trying to get this gap filled, right? That's what that gray box is in this. So we're looking for this to basically finish higher. So the trade earlier, and I'll discuss this with EXPE, uh, the position I was in, is if you notice price line yesterday wasn't really moving, right? Expedia is pretty much in the same, I mean, well, it is, it's in the same category, right? Expedia is a travel agency site. Priceline is a travel agency site, right? So with well, this particular move, we were looking at this yesterday and trying to figure out, you know, why is this not moving, right? S&P was up higher. It's a high beta stock. This should be trading higher, right? So we go and look and you know, we look at TripAdvisor, Expedia. You look at other companies in the same sector and you want to come and see, you know, are these setting up for a move? Right, because there's a huge correlation, right, to how these stocks trade together. Right, so luckily we put on a position yesterday. I would say, I wouldn't say luck, we planned for this, but you know, we put on this position yesterday, and so far the CXP position has made me more than my price line position has today. Right, because this is kind of, they kind of lead each other. And if you look at these charts, or it stands this kind of pullback, these are pretty much the same charts. So any questions with that EXP? But right now, there's not really much else I would exit on this. I'll cover that price line trade here in a second. Um, I'm just not sure that I'm exiting this, this PCLN yet. Right? I'm really waiting for, I'm really trying to be patient with this and allow this kind of gap to fill and to get to these highs. Right, another position I'll discuss that we currently have on um, is SKX, right? This is also a favorite stock of mine. And this is something that we're going to discuss for our upcoming um, set it and forget it options trading class. It's like a swing trading options class. Um, I actually prefer this style of trading more so than the active trading. So I'll discuss this here. So this is a huge move actually. That was really up. Okay, nice. I haven't even looked at this since yesterday. So SKX is Skechers. For those of you who don't remember, this stock had a huge, huge earnings drop uh, recently. Uh, we were actually at a member, and I'll discuss this too. Again, this is the power of, I would say, directional options trading when you know what you're doing with it. Uh, he was short this move off a double top into earnings, and I think he had $80 in the position. Uh, there's a video, and I'll, I'll give links to it. Uh, we discussed it in our in a group meeting uh, where he netted about 1500 plus in this particular trade, right? So again, using options to exploit larger term moves in the marketplace. So this is the position we put on yesterday, right? We would consider this our boing boing strategy. I won't discuss it too much, um, kind of funny, but this is a position again, where, you know, you're looking for like a, a reversion to the mean on this, right? This stock was so oversold, right? That we're looking for some type of a retracement from recent highs, right? And I really like this, this setup, this strategy, the set it and forget it trades, right? Because I don't even need to watch this particular position. Um, I think I allocated, what did I put on this? So I put on, right? I'm really trying to get these options to trade to three or four contract, right? So I'm looking at a risk reward of like one to four, one to five on this, right? I really want this to get higher. And this is a trade where I don't really need to, to watch this, right? I'm really not going to come back and look at this thing um, at least for another three or four weeks, right? Until these are back at three or four contract, right? So same kind of concept, but you're looking to swing an option versus kind of day trade it. So any questions on that slide? If not, I'm going to jump over to back to this real quick. So. So those are the most of the live positions I wanted to cover. I'm going to cover in this position here. Um, actually, I'll cover the, a recent Google trade um, and same kind of concept with this. So um, this is a recent position that I had on from this summer uh, with Google. It was a $6,000 trade. Um, again, 
this position was a little more extreme, I would say. Um, the reason was that you know we're, we're kind of paying um, about five thousand dollars for these particular options. This was intended to basically be a swing trade for me. If you notice the strikes on these, right? I was way way out on this. It just so happened that this you know Google actually moved a lot quicker than we expected, um, and you've got to kind of take profits. It's the same kind of concept, and I was explaining to our members in the trade room yesterday on this SKX or this morning rather that this thing's moved a lot quicker than we thought, right? So, you know, while our goal is basically to try to get this particular position to go to three to four in the contract, um, you know, it's pretty much doubled, almost tripled for us already. So, you know, it's another position or another kind of concept we'll discuss is, you know, kind of risk management. So, let me see what else is going on on this side because I do have some other positions I got to monitor while we're trading this today. Did anybody trade the uh, CRM earnings? All right, so we'll look at this in a second, but I want to go over the price line trade and discuss that in some detail. I believe it was. Give me a second. Again, sorry that this isn't set up on the T. Literally, um, the market was moving really quickly this morning. And while we planned for this, I'm a primarily a trader, so I have to kind of manage my positions. So I'll actually go over the BABA trade instead. We'll discuss this trade. So. This is another situation that's actually recent as well. So Alibaba had a trade back in May, or again, kind of set it and forget it type position where we had purchased, or I purchased rather, 20, 20 calls at 35 cents, right? So initial investment on us about $700. Um, we were able to sell these out in a matter of about six days and net about $1,600 in the trade. Right, so going back to the slide and discussing, you know, why I like directional options trading, is going to the advantages slide is number one there's no margin right so all those positions you just saw in my trading account i'm not carrying any margin on them right i don't have to sell a call spread tie up capital um, i'm not putting margin out number two is i know my risk right for me you know i'm going to mention this because i saw something this morning i literally saw a trader lose one hundred and six thousand dollars, um, and he's a newer trader he put up some account like go go fund me it's not to poke fun of them but you know he was trying to short the stock yesterday it went against them and literally now he's owes he trade a balance right from a risk standpoint and i've seen it over the years if you saw it in 2009 the last thing you want to do is put yourself in a position i would say is to take on more risk than what your account is right i know my risk right so again i even checked it again it's limited downside right when i take these positions right if i go through let's say um, let's just use EXP for example, right? So when I was in this position yesterday, I think I had a total of 10 contracts, maybe less. I think there were 50 cents a piece, right? So my max loss on this, I, mean, I would stop out at 50%, but if everything went awry, the max I would lose is $500, right? I can go to sleep, I can live with that, right? That's not going to hurt me too much. Um, I know I can go to sleep. It's very, very tough to put on a position and come back and owe your broker money. Right, I tell this story because it happened to me last February. Um, I was short, again, another bio stock. Um, this stock here, actually, I'll pull it up. I was short this name, I was short call spreads on this when this move happened here. Right, so the, those of you who know what call spreads are, I was short this, basically I, I had, um, Sold one call and I bought the other higher. Right out of nowhere, this this company released some news that came out. Um, I forgot what it was. I walked into the office and the stock was up 100 points. So instantly at the open, I was down about 70,000 and peaked to 80,000. Um, luckily for me, I got out of the position and reshorted it. But it's really really tough pill to swallow 
when you come in and see you're down eighty thousand dollars on a crate, right? It's very, very tough. Again, that's one of the issues I have with um, selling premium, especially if you're trading a small trading account, or if you're just trying to do this as a hobby, you're kind of bringing extra income, right? It's you're, you're limiting yourself as far as risk goes. Um, and for me, that's probably my number one priority is managing risk and trying not to lose money. The other advantage I would say with this is non-day trading, right? So a lot of this stuff is, I would say it's not really day trading, right? The only thing that I would day trade personally as a trader and somebody sits at and does this full time is futures, right? So S&P minis, Russell, um, crude oil, that's more day trading, but a lot of these positions are set and forget. Right? We put these positions on, we leave them alone, um, we put our stops in and we let the market kind of trend and it's either going to work or we're going to take a stop, a predetermined stop. Right? We always know our risk and we're always keeping the process the same. The last thing I'll say is the lower cost of investment is, again, you, like I mentioned before with this, you're not going to need a $250,000 trading account to do this. You don't need a lot of money. right? Um, the last point on this is simple stock watch list. On my watch list that I personally use, and I'll try and pull it over here. Right, there's probably 30 stocks in this list. Right, so this is all I ever pay attention to. I have a few other things in here as well, but pretty much it's just the same set of stocks over and over and over. Right, there's really no need to reinvent it. I prefer it because um, from a simplicity standpoint, it's not having to come in every week and go and look at you know, different trades or trying to find a new hot stock to trade. It's always the same thing, right? You're just looking for stocks to basically trend in the market, right? A stock like IRSRG is not really trending this year, right? A stock like Apple, right? This was trending, right? You had a huge trend pullback and this is pretty much, you can buy calls in this and pretty much do really well with this. Right, the trend's kind of somewhat broken, so at least opened up a little bit. You know, may come back and test highs here. But I want to consistently trade stocks like this. Right, and I want to keep stocks that move. Um, you know, even SPY, S&P 500, right? This is, this is something you can consistently trade. Right, you don't have to go out and find a hot bio stock or anything else. It's just a very simple methodology of trading. Um, and you don't have to beat the screens kind of all day. No more stops on NICE. I didn't, I didn't see that. You're saying they're, they're not putting stops on the option side? So, is it, did I understand that right, Stefan? There's no more. At least that's interesting. That's, I mean, it's interesting because yesterday we were trading, so we were long this price line yesterday. And I was really, we were all watching this in the room. And I looked over for a second and there was a spike right here. And it literally dropped this down for maybe, I don't know. And it did, the options changed, on, the options moved on it too. It was really, really interesting to see that. Yeah, so currently, you know, I'm still long some positions. Um, before we do a Q&A real quickly, I'll discuss the trading plug offer that we have, then we'll kind of go back to this. Um, so if you're interested, so if you've never traded this style of trading, or if you're interested in, in adding it to your methodology of trading, we have a two hour class, it's next week, it's called Set It and Forget It Options class. It's two hours, it's live recorded, I'm teaching it along with one of our other instructors. Um, with that, it's a, a small account ebook. We'll give you the, our land chart template, it has two of our indicators um, that's all for thinkorswim and you have access to our basic their shark room pro it's our live trading room this is kind of a preview of it um, but it's actually a chat room and then live room you can actually watch me trade um, monday through friday and then there's a two tos tutorial videos it's an hour long of how to use thinkorswim right so we talk about active trader how to find you know the, the watch list i use um, the entire template is laid out in this you can actually sign up for this. The class is next week. If you can't make the class, it's recorded, right? So it's a really, really good offer. Um, I would say because you get two months of the trade room with it, 
and it's a two hour class, and there's an ebook that's 30 pages long, uh, then you have our template. So we normally charge for that template that comes with this. Um, you can actually sign up for it. I'll give you the link and we'll go back to. I'm sure I'll look at it. I'll give you the link to it, but you can actually sign up for it on our site. It's just $97 for this. Um, it's next Tuesday at 7 p.m. But we'll talk more about this in a second. So this is the time we've a lot of our questions. We can go through some of the stuff that I've discussed here. While questions are coming through, I need to let me just look at some of these positions and make sure so I got out of that. That's a run. This is actually going to be a really good trade. I'm really glad I put that on. Right, again, if you notice this, I, like I mentioned, there's one more thing that I took off on here because I was messing with something earlier this morning. But we really don't use a lot of indicators. It's pure price action driven. Um, and then it's also knowing the right stocks to trade. Right, You don't, like I mentioned before, with this style options trading or, or the thing that we discussed with set it and forget it trading, it's just really a, 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 set, um, a set kind of uh, list of stocks that we trade. There's really not much else to it. Um, we're not really searching for a lot of stocks. If I can find the, the other PCL trade, I'll cover that as well. But it was something really, really similar to this, where the sell-off is actually occurring. We are buying the lows on it. I think it was back. Remember correctly. I think it was back here. It's kind of the same thing. We're earnings and miss, and we we're looking for the pullback. So the same exact concept on this, right? So I'm actually long, and there's I would consider the set it and forget it. We call it boing boing. That's like a swing trading strategy. I'm actually long calls it a way up here on this because I do believe the stock kind of comes back, fills this gap. So no questions at all on that? Tough crowd. Yes, there's a number of questions or anything as far as the positions we've talked about. Mm, so the question is, do you make any effort to be market neutral, i.e. balancing long and short positions? Yeah, so look, when I was running the portfolio for, um, when I was trading larger portfolios, absolutely, I would try to be market neutral. Um, but with, you know, with a smaller portfolio, you know, that account, I think it's only thirty five, maybe forty thousand. I really don't. The second thing is, I don't. As far as risk management goes, um, you know, with a small account like that, I probably don't even. So let's say I have forty thousand in the account. At any given time, I don't really believe in having probably more than twenty percent of actual account capital allocated into positions, right? So if that's let's say a forty thousand dollar account, I have eight thousand out. I'm sitting on thirty two thousand in cash. Right, so um, you know, with that, it, if you're trading high beta stocks like what I'm doing in this particular strategy, I don't think you really need to balance balance it out. Right, if, if the market's moving higher, pretty much everything's moving. Right, if you, you go across and you look at like, I mean, what's what's down today? I mean, what what's what's the market's pretty much up the past two days. There's not really much aside from actually look at CRM because that was long now. You know, like I might short this today, 
But, you know, again, if you're running a large book, yeah, it makes sense to be hedging and to have different positions. If you're trading a small account, and again, I would consider small less than 100,000. I mean, you have to ask yourself, I mean, are you trying to play hedge fund manager or are you here to make cash? So there's just no really sense to hedge. The other way to get around that, uh, instead of trading options, is to trade in mini futures, right? So another, I'll give you an example. So if I'm long, if I'm long like this PCLN right now, which I am, right? So if we weren't in this room here, I'd have my trading dome up on the futures broker and I'd be watching this, like I should probably get short this right now. So I'd be watching the S&Ps and I'd short out some S&Ps to basically hedge out the long book, which is my options. Right, I would rather I would rather trade S and P's versus another option. No, the ninety seven dollars I'll bring that up. Give me a second. Is not for the monthly subscription. Um, give me a moment. So the ninety seven dollars is access to the two hour class. So it's a two hour class next Tuesday at seven o'clock Eastern. It's a set it and forget it options class, so it's more swing trading options you have a two month membership to our live trading room. The live trading room is, there's two options, the $99 option, and there's a 250 option. The 250 option is um, live trading room, our Twitter, a members forum, our traders toolbox, and then we have monthly member webinars. So you have two months access to that. So normally that's 225 a month. You get two months of that, you get our template, you get our video series on uh, Thinkorswim and the course for $97. So if you were just to buy the, the um, Trader Malone and B for two months, it's $450, right? You're basically getting it for $97, plus you get a class, an ebook, our template, and then our tutorial videos. Does that make sense? Sorry. If it was, yeah, no problem. Yeah, so I'll show you the template when you guys sign up. Yeah, I think this one. Mm -hmm. We have it for eSignal too, because um, some of our traders use e I I really just use Thinkorswim for my charting. Yeah. And that class is recorded. It's better to show up to it because you can ask questions. It'll be two hours. We'll go through past examples. Um, I'll cover that price line trade in it because that wasn't really a swing trade, but we'll cover it because it's kind of the set and forget with that as well. But it's next Tuesday night. You go into big fibs. Yeah, so part of the set it and forget it option strategy is dependent on Fibonacci. So with that kind of strategy, you're only looking for, really looking for moves that are going to last three to like six, six weeks. Sometimes what happens, right, and I'm not gonna complain about it, I'm gonna take it from the market. Sometimes what happens is you get a stock like XKX. Like we put this trade on yesterday, really thinking this was gonna take us like, I would say a month to make this happen. Like, you know, four or five weeks. We're already up on this quite a bit. I think this will take less than expected. And it happened to me on, on Sprint before as well. Um, you look for these type of trading positions where you want to allow the trade to work over, you know, a set of weeks instead of, you know, the in and out kind of stuff. I really like that, especially if you've ever traded futures and you've had that death by a thousand cuts kind of idea where you're trading futures and you blow up an account and you're just getting chopped, chopped, chopped. It's much easier, my experience, putting on a position and managing a portfolio in that manner and not having to watch a thing every night. So David, I do not know anything about options. Do I have to pay Thinkorswim to use their platform, the data feeds? No, okay, so the really good thing about Thinkorswim, and I love them for this, is they don't charge anybody to use their platform. 
right? And they haven't done that since 2008. The platform's actually free. If you go to their site, you can download it and use it. I can't tell you what our rate is, but we get a discounted rate, um, our group rate. So if you go to this course, the Set It and Forget It Options course, your commissions are, I mean, it's, I'll tell you, it's drastically reduced. Um, I actually may be getting in trouble for mentioning it even, even here. So your options are reduced because you trade with us. But there's no data feed at all. There's no fee for it. So you can get think you can get ES futures, Russell. You don't have to pay for the data. It's free. And but go above sixty. I don't want to. I mean, it's tough to comment on. I mean, I don't want to tell you and like you have a position on. You know, I can look at it and say. I don't really follow this stock much at all. I mean, that's tough. I don't know. I I don't know that I trade this myself. Just yet. I don't really know what's going on. I need to know a little bit of fundamentals. I just see technicals on this. All I see is a double bottom. You know, I wouldn't touch this until it got above 60. Until you broke this recent night. That's me personally. Yeah, the, the list of stocks that I'll cover. So with the set it and forget it, we cover I cover about 50 stocks that I overall run with the set it and forget it strategy. There's like 20 stocks and there's a setting scan for this method where you, you'll trade some type of stock, some stocks that are out of the the, um, the kind of standard list. You'll trade some additional stocks. You'll kind of find and say, okay, like A and B actually might be one. I have to go and look and run the scan on it and see exactly what it is. But we, we look and we look at a scan and see a set of stocks, whether they're overbought or oversold, and we look for trades based on this using options that would express it. But it's a really, I would say, simple method. Again, you're not having to calculate deltas, look at theta. Um, you know, it's essentially what you want to replicate is like, if I want to buy S or Skechers shares, you know, I don't want to spend, you know, what's that stock trading at? I don't want to spend, you know, 30,000 on shares. I'm just going to buy the options and have the same kind of concept. And then also when you get to the site, be sure to, uh, you can actually check our reviews. There's a lot of stuff on here. Just go ahead and click this up here. That'll show you some cool stuff as well. The top left there. But yeah, that's, I think I'm getting pretty close to my allotted time. Sorry about the mic if it was kind of, you know, choppy earlier. Um, sorry we didn't get to Priceline. But again, I'm, I think it was cool because I had some live positions that I needed to get out of. It was live trading. So. Are there any other questions? Feel free to ask. I've got about two minutes. I think I have two minutes left. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think I have two. Do you usually buy in the money options or do you usually trade weekly? So I do both. So depending on the particular trading setup, you know, if we're going to swing trade a position, um, they're probably not weeklies. Um, the EXP position I put on, those were weeklies, right? But based on an understanding of technical analysis, I had the, the theory that it would kind of move quickly so I could, I could exploit the weeklies versus the monthlies. So there's not, so just to expand on that, Noor, is like you really can't say like, I only buy in the money or out of the money. You, you have to adjust for the market, right? You have to adjust for that. Again, so how much time do you buy and what delta? I try to stay at about a 30 or less delta for the most part. Um, again, the time I buy, is, it's tough. It depends on the setup, right? On the set it and forget it live class, it's, you know, we're going to look at 30 to 60, 90 day options. On this particular class, right? Obviously with, like, you know, look, the SKX trade this morning I had on, it's not SKX, um, EXPE, right? These are weeklies. I mean, these things literally expire Friday, so I had to be dead on with the analysis on the right side. So if, I, if my analysis wasn't correct, I and mean, we nailed this, um, it wouldn't have allowed for me to use the weeklies, right? I've got to be a little more conscious, but we nailed this entire move, right? So I'd rather exploit a short-term move of weeklies versus monthlies because I can make more here, right? But this requires you to be at the screen. If you're one of those traders at the screen, then yeah, you know, obviously. It's going to work really well.
Okay, so it looks like I'm pretty much out of time. Uh, I mean, my live trades are on here. You can go and look. I'm up 250,000 on the year. You can go and find them here on one of those accounts. All right, so it looks like I'm out of time. Thanks, everybody, for coming. If you guys have questions, um, shoot us an email. Enjoy the next presenter. Enjoy the rest of your trading day, and best of luck out there. Hopefully, uh, this was of some value. So have a good day. Thank you. Well, thank you, Daniel, for that great presentation on how you use Fibonacci's as one of